Welcome. My name is William Porter McRoberts, MD. I'm an interventional physiatrist living here in South Florida, um, Fort Lauderdale area. And today we're talking about neuromodulation. This is chapter two of Neuromodulation University. The good, the bad, and the ugly about spinal cord stimulators, peripheral nerve stimulators, peripheral, peripheral nerve field stimulators, what to expect, what can go wrong, why you should do it, why you shouldn't do it, and uh, all the nitty-gritty on neuromodulation. Today it's chapter two. We're talking about what is spinal cord stimulation. And I'm going to give you an overview. I'm going to try and keep it short and sweet so you understand what we're talking about. Spinal cord stimulation. In short, it is the, the use of an electrically implantable lead, uh, a lead that provides electricity to the, the dorsal column, the back part, the top the, of the spinal cord, which is the area of the spinal cord that carries sensation up to, up to the brain. We pulse the spinal cord in an effort to relieve pain, providing electrical anesthesia, so to speak, to anything south of uh, that spot in the cord. If we put the uh, stimulator in your cervical spine, for example, we're aiming usually to um, address pain in your upper extremities, your arms, hands, but also can address pain in your lower extremities, legs, even back. Spinal cord stimulation is a two-part process where we uh, first do a trial and then ultimately permanently implant a spinal cord stimulator, which is all underneath the skin, much like a pacemaker is. Um, instead of pacing your heart, however, we are pacing your spinal cord and your peripheral nerves, those being nerves which are outside of your spinal canal, in an effort to mitigate, reduce, or eradicate pain in you uh, long term. This is a procedure that is for people who have chronic pain. Um, at present, uh, we do not have the tools to treat acute pain with neuromodulation. That may change in time. But um, spinal cord stimulation and neuromodulation is really a division of, uh, of three separate types of treatment. The first is spinal cord stimulation, something you probably have already read about, know a little bit about, watched some uh, YouTube videos on. But it is placement of leads in the canal. When leads are placed in the spinal canal, it's called spinal cord stimulation. That's what's there. We also stimulate other parts of the spinal canal, uh, the nerve roots that enter into the spinal cord, but nevertheless, this is all termed as spinal cord stimulation. The way it's done is we take a, a small needle after numbing up your, your back while you're awake. We, we place this little needle into your back, and it's not very painful. It's just like what any pregnant lady gets uh, for an epidural prior to having a baby. And we, we place, instead of a catheter that's going to... Uh, inject medicine into your spine, we inject a catheter which is going to inject energy, current, so to speak. And the way to think about this is current is a digital drug that is delivered to the spinal canal to contribute to relief in possible neuroplasticity. We'll talk about neuroplasticity later, but it's really the ability of your body, your brain or your spinal cord to rewire and rethink um, the way it feels things. Um, neuromodulation is essentially learning. It's something that we thought that the brain or spinal cord couldn't do after a young age, but um, we've been shown the past decade or two that uh, neuroplasticity occurs at every uh, age level and age group. But um, you should know we don't fully understand how neuromodulation works in spinal cord stimulation, but the idea is to essentially stop the ascension of the pain signal from whatever is distal or further away uh, from the brain and uh, place a block, so to speak, or a, uh, instead of an anesthetic of uh, local anesthetic, a chemical. A placement of electricity is an anesthetic uh, between the pain and your brain. Peripheral nerve stimulation is a quite a bit different. We'll talk about that in a little bit. And peripheral nerve field stimulation is yet entirely a, to a totally different thing. At present, um, what is termed on-label through the FDA, uh, the Federal uh, Drug Administration, uh, spinal cord stimulation is, is on-label. Peripheral nerve stimulation has been on label for certain products, but for many of the products uh, we use, it is, quote, off-label, and that means it has um, not been approved by the FDA. That said, uh, the FDA being a wonderful governing body that uh, protects the population, and I'm extremely happy we have it, the FDA does not govern um, what physicians do, and uh, it merely governs the, the sale and promotion of devices, and it's very important to do so and to explain uh, so that patients understand exactly what they're getting. Peripheral nerve stimulation being off-label is where we take the same type of equipment that we use in the spinal cord stimulator 
and then place it over peripheral nerves. Uh, these are nerves like the sciatic nerve or the median nerve that goes to your to the carpal tunnel, for example, or the peroneal nerve, the axillary nerve, all the nerves that go to the rest of your body. After they exit the spine, these nerves form uh, plexi and different uh, uh, roots that then subserve the sensation in different parts of your body. So the idea behind peripheral nerve stimulation is, is to stimulate those nerves directly. Peripheral nerve field stimulation is yet entirely different. It is indeed peripheral nerve stimulation, but this is placing a, a needle um, blindly in an area of pain and uh, simply placing the needle underneath the skin to uh, and the lead to stimulate uh, the last, uh, so to speak, the leaves of the tree. And uh, this is done in an attempt to reduce pain in that specific area. Um, that is not placed to a named nerve um, because there's no named nerve near it. Uh, deeper nerve stimulation occurs on nerves that can be seen, say, under ultrasound or uh, under uh, other imaging techniques, MRI, etc. In short, that is uh, uh, what is spinal cord stimulation and a little more. And next we're going to talk about peripheral nerve stimulation, Chapter 3, and uh, then Chapter uh, uh, 4, Why Neuromodulation. My name is William Porter McGrath, MD. This is Neuromodulation University, The Good, the Bad, and the Ugly, about spinal cord and uh, peripheral nerve stimulation why you should do it, why you shouldn't do it, what are ultimately the risks and benefits, and an attempt to educate you as a patient as to uh, why, as to what you're getting into. It's a pleasure and an honor talking to you. Thank you so much.